In the Indian state of Punjab, for every 1,000 men, there are just 750 women. It's among the greatest demographic gender imbalances in the world. Since 2003, the government has prohibited using ultrasound to determine the sex of a fetus. Despite that, it's estimated that one female fetus is aborted every 22 seconds on average, totaling many million over the last three decades. A son is considered a blessing, whereas a daughter is seen as a costly burden. Midwife Neelambala is challenging this attitude. Doing well? Yes. Caesarean? Yes. Stitches gone? Yes. How old's the baby? 11 days. You're eating normally? Yes. Does the baby have digestive problems? No. Patreri is a village in Punjab, home to about 1,000 people. You are Sundri? Sundri Devi. Did I ask you? Your husband's name? Deepak Kumar. You say his name. Few wives dare to. Everyone should know that you've said the name of this good-for-nothing man. I was just a child. A neighbor had terrible stomach pain, and an ambulance took her to the hospital. I was puzzled that she came back with a baby and wondered how people end up getting babies anyway. I was in seventh grade at the time. When I was in eighth grade, two other women had children, and I asked my mother where they came from. She told me, you go to the hospital, and the doctors and nurses give people babies. From then on, I wanted to be a nurse. All good, Rita? I'm fine. Bring her to me. Okay. I'll do a blood test. I've worked as a midwife for more than 30 years. That is a long time. The first children I delivered already have their own kids. I delivered this whole village. Sometimes pregnant women ask me to do an ultrasound. They want to know if they're in luck or not. Then I ask them, what's that supposed to mean? They say, you know very well what it means. If it's a boy, we've done our job. And I say, and if it's a girl, you haven't? Joju is a village about 200 kilometers from Patreri. Nearly all the residents are men. No girls have been born here for decades. The men here buy wives from other Indian states. Demographic forecasts predict that by 2025, there will be 32 million single men in India. My eldest brother is Surindar. Then there's Joginder and I'm Rajinder Singh. All three of us are single. Because there are only men here. There are too many men in the world. It's been that way for 15 or 20 years since ultrasound tests came along. If they find out it's a girl, then they'd rather have an abortion. 
लड़के होते थे तो उसको That's why the number of girls has fallen so drastically. The problem has gotten worse in recent years. We don't know if it will get better again or worse. There's no solution in sight. My eldest son is already too old to marry, but the middle one should marry, and the youngest then too. Those who marry can start a family and have a future. The others don't belong. They're outsiders to society. That's the way it is here. With so few women in this village, Many of the men here are lonely and have given up hope. I like sitting under this tree in the shade. It's a godly place, a magical spot for us all. I sit here and dream of marrying and starting my own family. I dream that my brothers and I will continue our family line. What more could I wish for than ensuring the name of my father lives on and isn't forgotten? That's all I want. Everything in my dream revolves around marriage. How else will my family name be passed on? But my father's name will probably disappear, and that worries me. Sweep a little and help me with the housework. That keeps you fit. Then you can sauté the vegetables. Neelam is making a house call to one of her patients, Rajni. Rajni is 10 months in? Yes. Are you quickly out of breath? No. You went to the hospital for an exam. Everything okay? Yes. Take care of yourself and listen closely. The hospital report says you have low amniotic fluid and the baby's position isn't optimal. Look after your daughter-in-law. Don't let her squat when she's doing housework. And she can't do heavy lifting. And no climbing stairs. Fine. Because of the baby's position, she should sleep with her legs elevated and take her for another checkup. You must take care of yourself. Go for a walk every day and stick to your diet. Come for another exam and don't forget the two red pills. You're responsible for your wife. Pay attention to her. What are you hoping for? A son. Oh, God. What's so good about a boy? A son would pass on my name and legacy. Indira Gandhi didn't have any brothers, and her name is known worldwide. You should be happy to see your child when you come home from work regardless if it's a boy or a girl. The main thing is that the baby is healthy. I don't want to hear it anymore. Just thank God for a healthy child. My niece Prerna is wonderful. She's different from other girls today. I'm paying for her education, as if she were my own daughter. And I've made it clear that she better not waste my money. She's promised to work hard. She's studying to become a nurse and midwife, and I'm paying for her training. Boys are cherished and placed on pedestals, while women and girls face enormous societal pressure. 
On the ultrasound from yesterday, we can see that Rajani has a placenta that's very low down, and she's passed her due date. What makes things even more difficult is that she has too little amniotic fluid. Trying to deliver normally is too risky. There's a danger of heavy bleeding if the baby were to go through the birth canal. Do you feel okay? Yes. Good. We'll fill out this form and transfer Rajini to a bigger hospital, okay? And she'll have a C-section. But don't worry, it'll all be fine. We'll take good care of mother and child, no need to be afraid. Why doesn't anyone pick up when I call an ambulance? Send an ambulance immediately. The patient's name is Rajni, the wife of Neeraj. Let's go. The hospital in Ambala is 30 kilometers away, but it's better for Rajni to not take any risks. When my patients are doing well, then I'm happy too. Helping bring a child into the world is the pinnacle of happiness. God's blessed you with a child after five years. Are you okay, my dear? You have a son. Take care of your child and yourself. I'm happy when someone has a baby. So very happy. I pray that God gives everyone children. We're in Mangalpur. I was 22 when I came here, shy and newly married. The first years of my marriage were happy. I got pregnant after four or five years, but I had a miscarriage. The doctor said I couldn't have any more children, but I grasped at every last straw. The relationship between me and my husband got worse and worse. We fought a lot. At some point, I just gave up, and he married someone else. He's happy with his life, as I am with mine. He has two children now, and I have a whole village that loves and respects me. I'm doing just fine. Back in the village of mostly men, the mother of the three brothers tells of her sorrow. I got married at 12 or 13. I'd like a good and nice daughter-in-law who would take on the housework. That would be nice. People used to throw baby girls in garbage cans because they feared the girls would later be raped. Today, they get aborted. No girls have been born here for decades. The men are starting to buy wives. They wouldn't have to do that if there were women here. The situation is so bad that all we can do now is save our family name. I told my sons they should buy a wife. 
but they don't want to. They're worried about what people would say. But our name must be carried on. A foreign girl would get used to it here eventually. But my sons are resisting, even though I would be okay with it. Rajinda's friend Raj is married to a woman from Delhi. My wife is called Pinky. I'm from Delhi. She went to school until 10th grade. I'm 20. Now she's 20. Here in the state of Haryana, there aren't any women. What else can we do except look for women from somewhere else to marry? I looked and looked until I was fed up. Then my uncle, who married in Delhi, told me he knew a matchmaker. He contacted him and asked me to send a photo of myself. He said they were good girls and he would see what he could do. I sent my picture via cell phone and they negotiated. Then my grandfather and I drove there to meet the girls. When I saw Pinky for the first time, I said yes right away. She's the right size and she's nice. After a month, I got a call. If you want to get married, come tomorrow. I told my family, we're going to Delhi. If you like Pinky, say yes. If you don't, say no. But everyone was happy and we got married. You'll always get criticized no matter what you do, but it's your life to lead. Hey man, it's your turn. Don't worry about what society says. This is how the world works. Someone will always be whining about it. But who cares? Everyone is looking for a wife from somewhere else. But not everywhere in India are baby girls seen as burdens. In Darhara, daughters are a reason to celebrate. The people in this remote village in the state of Bihar have carried on a very special tradition for centuries. Do you want to hold your seedling? Here, hold it. <laughs> Give me some soil. It's standing. Add a bit more soil so it doesn't tip over. Now take good care of it. Every time a girl is born, the family spreads sandalwood paste on her forehead and plants a tree called the daughter tree. Today we're celebrating my daughter's birthday. To mark the occasion, we've planted 10 trees, two in front of my house and the rest in the garden. I'm so happy to have a daughter. A girl always brings good luck. People in Dahara see things differently than people in other villages, where girls are seen as a burden and don't even have the right to live. Here, girls are considered the incarnation of the goddess Lakshmi, who brings prosperity. 
We want girls, not boys. Girls are something special to us. The harvest from the trees is sold and the money is invested in the girl's future. For us, women are goddesses. They're never a burden. We plant a mango seedling in an empty garden. We water it regularly and care for it so that it grows into a healthy tree that produces lots of fruit. In the first four years, we earn about 1,000 rupees per tree. After 5, 10 or 20 years, however, we earn a lot more. A 15-year-old tree will bring in about 5,000 rupees per year, at least. Usually, it's a lot more. We put the money the tree yields towards school fees and the wedding. Neelam has a new patient, Menka. Have you eaten ghee? Yes. Do you want to risk a C-section? My mother gives it to me sometimes. I've already told you not to eat ghee during the pregnancy, because when your blood pressure goes up, the chances of a normal birth go down. And it can hurt the baby. This is your fifth pregnancy? Yes. Just to get a boy. We need a boy. Why does it have to be a boy? The girls move away at some point. We need a boy to take care of the house. But you already have one. But we have to take care of him, poor thing. What's wrong with him? He's seven and can't walk yet. Is he disabled? Yes, he can't feed himself either. So that's why. And he needs diapers. How many children? Two girls. And boys? Just one. Does your husband have brothers? No. Your husband is an only son, and your only son is disabled. And this time? This time, God will bless us. Of course. I'm praying for a healthy boy. Like everyone else. True. But God decides. Everyone says you should have at least one boy. People say a lot of things. I'm often asked why I don't have children. You should do what's best for you. The ladies gossip, though. Don't listen to them. If you paid attention to gossip, you'd think our only purpose in life is to have kids, that we're baby machines that are kept in the house until we're too old to get pregnant. But we all hope that God hears your prayers. I'll pray to God that he blesses you with the best. One, that he helps you through the birth. Two, I hope your child will be healthy. And three, that your wish is fulfilled and you get a boy. But don't pay attention to the others. Societal expectations need a reassessment. Neelam knows that education is the way to prompt one. What are you up to? Nothing. Are you on WhatsApp? Put that away. 
Just two minutes. Where's your book? I'm taking a break. My book's right here. So? That's not how it works. I was studying. What did you learn? Show me. Explain what you learned. You'll never get this time back. Life isn't about what's on WhatsApp. There's plenty of time for fun, food, and games, but now you study. Don't you get it? Education is vital. If you know a lot and have a family later on, your children will benefit from your education too. What's this? Let me see. Is it a placenta or a heart? A placenta. That's the baby, and the umbilical cord is here. Sometimes the placenta doesn't come out on its own. That's called a retained placenta. When that happens and the uterus contracts, you have to pay extra close attention. Sometimes pressure on the bladder causes the placenta not to be expelled. So they insert a catheter to empty urine from the bladder. Then you can put a little bit of pressure on the abdominal wall from above. But you should never push too hard on the placenta or use lots of force to pull it out. Otherwise, the woman can tear, which could lead to severe bleeding, and the mother could even die. Now I'm going downstairs and I'll tell you for the last time, you should study. Come down to dinner after or, or keep studying. If I see that you've been on WhatsApp, give me your phone. I'll shut it off. Hand it over. I really won't use it. I'm supposed to believe that? Don't cause any trouble again today. It was a long day. Why? What happened? Remember that pregnant woman I told you about? I visited her and there were 12 women at her house. I said, whatever it is, a child is always something good. You know what they replied? The first child must be a boy. And I said, what? Why? If you only want boys, who will have the girls? How are we supposed to survive without girls? Tell me, how would life work without women? Why do you get involved? Just let it go. I can't help but fight. You're like a daughter to me, right? I should have been a boy, too. What's so good about boys? When I come home, you make me tea, cook a meal, and take care of me. If you were a boy, it probably wouldn't be like that. I know that when I come home, you're there to help me make meals and do laundry. Everything is done. People talk because there's no man in our family. I always say, it doesn't matter, I've got my auntie. They think the head of the family has to be a man. I tell them my auntie isn't just the head of the household, she takes care of everything else, too. Do you know the song, You Are My Son, You Are My Daughter? That's the way I see it. Don't listen to the others. Do your own thing. There you go. That will do. Come here. I love you. I love you more than any son. That's for sure. Could you make me a tea, please? The next morning, Neela must meet with the village elders and answer their questions. Her views aggravate them and fuel their anxieties. Hello, everyone. Are you all well? Yes, doing well. You're not going to say hello to us? 
Hello. You've been working in our village for a long time, Neelam. For 34 years. Right. So why are you still meddling in business that isn't yours by telling people whether they should have a boy or a girl? Who says I'm meddling? That's what I hear. Regardless if a woman is expecting a boy or a girl, I always say that the health of the mother and the child is top priority. Everything else is secondary. Is that wrong? People try to bribe me with thousands of rupees. You all claim I'm meddling in your lives, but in reality, you're meddling and hassling me with your bribes. A bribe for what? An illegal ultrasound. Can you blame them? What? A girl costs lots of money. Boys do too. But we have to pay the dowry. But you get it back with a daughter-in-law. Why do you accept the dowry? You could turn it down. We don't have to carry on this tradition forever. If a girl goes to school and works, who cooks? What if your daughter-in-law had a job? She'd do it after work. Let's say your son is engaged with someone who studied and works as a teacher. Are you going to oppose that and say, I need somebody who can bake me bread? As soon as she gets home, she can start making the meal. That's our problem. Girls are a burden, while boys give us status. I know middle-class families who have left the hospital crying after the birth of a girl because they think they've lost everything. Girls are a big worry for their parents. It hurts us when they cause a scandal and don't want to marry the man that we've chosen for them. That's different. For that sort of disobedience, you can kill your adult daughter. But why do you have to kill them before they're even born? I didn't say anything about killing. But I'm talking about murder, murdering the unborn. Listen to me. Of 100 girls, maybe just two will go wrong. They don't want to get it. Let's go into the office and work. Please understand. Leave them. They should decide what they want to keep, a boy or a girl. The gender shouldn't play a role. Sometimes the mother-in-law and the mother and son argue about how to handle things if it's a girl. Then they come to me, asking if it's a boy or a girl. If ultrasound exams were legal, we'd carry them out. I used to do them before. I did many ultrasounds and performed abortions. But I only helped those that had lots of daughters. Yes, I did ultrasounds too. I won't deny it. But then, there was this one day. I had agreed to do an ultrasound exam. After that, everything was different. And since then, I haven't performed another abortion in 25 years. It really got under my skin and taunts me to this day. It stuck with me. This woman didn't know she was pregnant until four months in. Her periods were irregular. And there had been a death in the family. She was at the start of the fifth month, but she wanted an abortion. I tried to make it clear to her that it was too late, but she and her husband wouldn't give up. They had to have an abortion. 
When it was over, I decided never to do another one again. And I won't do ultrasounds either to find out if it's a boy or a girl. I wanted to adopt the girl, but instead I let the parents have an abortion. I still cry about this baby. The baby survived the birth. It wanted to cry out but couldn't open its mouth. When I felt the girl's heartbeat, it felt as if she were saying, Please take me home. But there was nothing I could do. I was powerless. I wished that I could have saved her. But I didn't do anything. And that's what drives me. I couldn't do anything then, but I can today. I have to act. Menka doesn't have much time left to pray before she gives birth. As soon as she goes into labor, she's rushed to the closest hospital. Neelam rides behind the ambulance. She'll assist at the birth. Menka, don't worry. I'm here. Don't be afraid. It will all be fine. When it's time, push as hard as you can. Okay, now. Push. That's good. Very good. Push, push, help us. Push as hard as you can. Very good. Push as much as you can. Very good. Here, my dear. There's your boy. He's healthy. As long as your child is healthy, all is well. Neelam is exhausted, but happy. Menka's greatest wish has come true. She's given birth to a healthy son. family in India observed the custom of planting a daughter tree. Perhaps it would bring an end to the worries plaguing villages with practically no women. There would be hope of a brighter future if girls were no longer seen as burdens. It 
It's a big day. There's a wedding in Dahara. The whole village is invited thanks to the mango trees and the fruit they bore. Despair still shrouds this village of men. Weddings are something they can only dream of. Loneliness and resignation dominate the days of the three brothers, from sunrise until deep in the night. Neelam, meanwhile, is planning for her retirement God bless you. May you have a long life. I'll retire in a few months. I'm happy because I'm fortunate enough to get a pension. But I worked in this profession for over three decades. Although it doesn't feel like work to me. I'm at home here. These are all my children. Work is sacred. We're nothing without work. What else are we supposed to do? Cooking, washing up and laundry? We have to do all that no matter what. But there's nothing more rewarding than work. I'll work for as long as I can. When I finally do slow down and rest, I would like it if someone from my family took over my work. And I already know who that's going to be.